Hi, this is Peyton with Girls Gone Right. We have a super fun podcast for you today. We are talking conspiracies with Megan and Rachel, our co-host. Hey guys, it's Rachel, and I'm super excited to kind of intro Megan today. So Megan, give us a little bit on your background and where you, how you landed where you are, and then we'll talk conspiracies. Hey guys, sorry, totally steps on you. Um, my name is Megan Major. No one knows how to pronounce my last name, so I thought I'd say that. Yes, Perfect. before I was like, is it I Major? Knew you, or... <laughs> yes. I knew you were like, you're like, Megan, um, it's Major, yep. <laughs> like a J. Uh, but uh, yeah, I am, uh, I guess, actor, writer, producer, stand-up, who, who like spent 10 years in Hollywood and then left because I was a closeted conservative and couldn't handle it anymore, especially during COVID. Uh, and I just wanted to speak about, I love making content and, um, I own a production company. I've made a few shows for Amazon. I've worked with like Steve Carell's production company, Kevin Hart's production company. Um, I did the Hollywood thing, but now I, my fiance and I own a production company, marketing company, and we work with, um, for the most part, very American, America forward brands. Um, and I also have my own show called Unmedicated that I do, uh, which is a spinoff kind of from a show I did on Spotify called Spot Pop Spiracy. And on Unmedicated, I talk about culture, politics, conspiracy theories. Um, and I also am a reporter for the Florida Standard. Wow. Whoa. A full list. <laughs> that is a, a whole list of exciting <laughs> like, things. No sense. <laughs> yeah. So also just some background. So I met Megan, moved from L.A. to Charlotte. And I think that like we found each other on social media and you were new in Charlotte. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's she's conservative. And she moved from L.A. Like you had a very cool story. And like I was a liberal in my past life. Um, so we met up. I'm like, wow, like we had like such a good conversation. Like the first time I met you, I'm like, wow, like that was like amazing. And it was just like someone that I wanted to stay connected with and you just have such a great story. So yeah, it was like a really, social media can be cool in that kind of way to actually meet people. And especially like, I feel like you see a lot of the controversial sides, like a lot we don't always see eye to eye, but when we do, it's like, wow, it's a diamond in the rough. I found someone that actually like has like-minded values. <laughs> Totally. No, thank you. I, I'm uh, I'm honored you feel that way. I feel the same way when I was in Charlotte. It was just this weird like six month stop in my life. And I didn't know anyone. It was during COVID. And a girl, it was a girl in our, um, in my apartment building said, I think you should reach out to this girl. And it was you, Peyton. And I think I messaged you. And um, yeah, I would love you into one of the like 10 people I met online during COVID that like kept me sane and like inspired me to keep going in this movement. So I think it's really cool that we met, and I I got really excited about it. I love that. Also, I wish see, I like, met you guys during COVID. I was down in Baton Rouge suffering. So it's I, have, so, I know. I was like, I don't know why I didn't meet you, but now you're in Charlotte, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. But I was also much more closeted then. So I, you know, it took. I it's totally an evolution. It. It's an evolution. Yeah. Now I don't. Yeah, COVID but... brought out the best in people. Like I think that it was just like a time where people like you really saw everyone's true colors and I think it really pushed a lot of people to get out there and spit it was like either people were going to be like on the complete opposite side of what you were thinking or like they were all for it and I think it was like a time where people you didn't really before that you didn't really know where people stood or most people and then you did and then it's just like you have all these people reaching out from like college high school like wait I actually believe the same thing that you do I'm just afraid to speak it and like I didn't know that there were people like me so I think it was just like in that sense of just like a dark time, but like yeah. you saw so much deeper and you saw everyone on a different level. You saw so. everyone's line in the sand, everyone's boundary. You, you saw the boundary and all of a sudden, I didn't really know what my line in the sand was until COVID. And I was like, all right, just kidding. I have a line in the sand. This is it. You guys have crossed it. I'm done being quiet about this. Like I just was so frustrated that no one was talking about it. But totally. That if you think... did, you got blasted. Yeah, attack. And I know I think that it was it, it really was a dark time. But then I look back and there's like so many cool people I met. And it really just took my life and I feel like a lot of people's lives in a totally different direction that I don't think I would have been on if that didn't happen. So you know, there's light yeah. in the dark. For yes. sure. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I guess this is like kind of perfect segue into our conspiracy theories chat. So what is your most outlandish conspiracy that you've heard? Like the craziest one? Okay, so I've done way too much research on conspiracy theories, mainly because it started with my Spotify podcast. Um, yes. And 
So at first we realized that there's this weird underground like pop culture conspiracy theory world where a lot of them are really silly. So um, some of the ones are like Kylie Jenner is a clone. Um, John Benet Ramsey is actually Katy Perry. Um, oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. These are so, outlandish. What? Um, Nicolas Cage is actually a vampire. Um, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I, there's there's a lot of those. I also don't even the, know if that answered your question. No, Wait, it totally I think that's does. So cool. I have I not think... heard the, like mm-hmm. the Jean the Jean Bonnet being uh, Katy Perry. I have never heard that one, and I get deep in Reddit. Like that is like my place to go to look up some conspiracies, and I like get stuck on a thread. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm so deep, and like the the people on Reddit they really just justify these. Like they're like, no, this is this is a conspiracy, but it's, it's true. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like they defend it so well and like get into detail, but I have not heard that one yet. And I think that is like one of my favorite ones, but I also like Nicholas the Helen Cage Keller one. Vampire? Helen Keller is another one. Yes. What, what are your thoughts on the Helen Keller conspiracy theory? Cause I have like some people that I like know that like Helen Keller denier and like they go full for it. So, and it's so interesting. Okay, tell me what you know about the Helen Keller conspiracy theory. Because I've heard so yep. many different things. There's so many different ones. Yes. And so from what I've, there's like, there is a lot. The one that I think that I believe to be the most reasonable conspiracy theory is that Helen Keller was, because some people say that she didn't exist. I think she existed. Yes. However, I don't, either one, she was not blind and deaf, or two, she did not write these books and it was like her i guess like tutor. what would you call it it was like her yeah, it was tutor her like caretaker yeah, her whoever that i was. think it was her caretaker my caretaker. personal belief is like that her caretaker did write all of these books and do all of these things to kind of give herself clout like oh i was able to be a miracle worker and did all these things but like instead of yes. helen doing it she just did everything but i don't that's, buy it because it's one I go, so that one we touched on, like, a, to be fully transparent, like, two years ago. So I'm not, like, it, I, back then I could have told you, like, the nitty gritty of what I thought. Yeah. I remember my conclusion was that it could have easily been the caretaker. It also could have been the caretaker, like, tr- you know, translating some of the stuff Helen Keller said or, like, not translating, yeah. but writing it down. And it was, like, kind of like a, it's like who actually wrote it type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, And it's. That one's hard, again, with a lot of these because there is no really hardcore evidence or proof or anything. Yes. So when you keep, you'll, you'll notice a lot of these, if you really dig, they'll easily fall apart or there will just be like a lot of missing pieces. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's sure. why there's conspiracy theories because there's a ton of room to, you know, think about stuff. But right. that was one where at first I was like, oh, whoa. And along those yeah. lines, one that's a more recent one that we did a whole episode on that um, I actually kind of believe is that Stevie Wonder may actually be able to see. <gasps> okay, so I've also heard the same thing yeah. too. Yeah. And it's, it's there's a whole conspiracy with like blind people and like I've gotten down to like the nitty gritty. Like some people actually think that they're like being blind does not exist. Like it's completely fake. And like oh. there's some people that, that it goes like very, very extreme and they're like, I don't even think that it, it's real. Like I don't think How blind people are would real. that be? That I don't know about. That I don't yeah, think. Yeah, that's, that's far. They, that's yes, really far. They spin. People spin. But the CD Wonder thing is interesting. And I think it had to have... I don't want to... Because I could literally take up the whole episode talking about him. But he was blind um, when he was born. He basically wasn't receiving enough oxygen. So okay. he went... I'd say almost like they described it as like nine-tenths blind. Um, and from a young age, he was put in a school for the blind. So there's documentation that he was blind. Um, right. And he quickly got signed to Motown when he was like 13. But since wow. then, he is now, you know, in his 70s, late 70s. And there's so many surgeries that he could have gotten to fix it. But would that hurt his brand? Probably. So that's part of it. And also, there's also like funny things where like there's this SNL performance where somebody drops a mic and he like runs across the stage and catches it. Um, Shaquille O'Neal also has said that like they used to live in the same building off of Wilshire in LA and he anytime he would get in the elevator with him uh, Stevie would be like what's up Shaq like so he would like know who he is but then again Shaq is big so it's like I guess you, you know, can feel a presence in the, exactly. in the elevator but still and also wow. Stevie also loves to buy like he has like flat screen TVs in his house everywhere apparently uh, which again like you could want to listen 
But there's that one I could go on about that there could be evidence that he actually might be able to. Right. See. And also, like, could see some. Like, can make yes. out shapes or, yeah, exactly. like, most, some see something. Like, not total blindness. Because, yes. like, how is he legally blind? Yep. Yes. But how blind are you? Yeah. Exactly. Like, enough to see shapes and stuff. But I think yeah. if that came out to the public, imagine everyone would be like, oh my God, see me wonder? That's like, so- is everything a lie? Like, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah if, that's a yeah, good one. Like, the blind part, like, it just, it, if you have talents, it just makes them even greater because, like, you're blind and they're like, exactly. wow, that's, you're even more incredible because you you went past what society thought you could do and, like, all gas, no brakes. Like, now, yep. now, like, so it's like all that is just, like, such a fascinating thing. But yeah. I have not heard that one either, which is I enjoy that. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a, that's that's a, a really really good one. one. That was one of my jokes. Oh. So, okay, so what is like a conspiracy theory that like you've heard and you're like well that would fall like more like a true theory in my book oh a lot of them and so what i realized is the i'll tell you some but the pop culture ones tend to be a little more goofy that's a little yeah. that's more legit and there are ones that are legitimate um but again anytime you see like a celebrity's a clone um although there's yeah. been some damar hamlin stuff recently about him possibly oh. being a clone um, oh i see I saw some of that stuff too. It's really yeah. I saw this, but I don't know what to make of these. Like, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. Like, I would need to spend hours and hours and hours yeah. deep diving this to even prove or disprove this stuff. Exactly. And then there's also, like, deep fake technology and all this stuff. So some of the ones I wrote them down. So let me, because, you know, I always have been skeptical of the government just because I grew up, like, my parents are very, like, libertarian conservative, I'd say, for the most part. Right. Um, so that was drilled in my head, like, you know, you can't trust everything. But then when I really started researching this, I was like, these aren't conspiracies. This is why I don't trust the government because all of this has been actually documented and they're not conspiracy theories. And my favorite one to this point is that the CIA created the term conspiracy theory to, to basically discredit anyone who Mm. believes in a certain theory. So that they, that says all you need to know about that term. Oh. That is honestly, I'm wearing my the government is gaslighting you shirt. I love that. And yeah, I'm like honestly, every anytime I get, I'm like, don't trust them. Just I don't. need that shirt. <laughs> don't trust the government. We'll send you one. Yes, we'll I send would, you one. I would love that. Thank you. Guys. <laughs> we um, will literally yeah, no, send okay. you one. So I'll tell you some that are. So one, have you heard of Operation Mockingbird? I don't think no. so. Okay, so that's a really good one, and it's it's not a conspiracy theory. It's true. Uh, and it is basically started after the Cold War and what the, the CIA wanted to disperse, you know, propaganda, you know, anti-Russia propaganda throughout the United States. So what the CIA would do is that they would sit there and, you know, become friends with high up, high ranking journalists at the New York Times, the Atlantic, different or whatever was around that New York Times was. I don't know if the Atlantic was, but uh, different publications. And they'd say like, hey, this is some classified info that we're seeing on the ground. And they would give them that. That information was not always true at all. If anything, it was misdirecting them and the public. So the CIA was just planning information that all of all the citizens would see at all times because they were directly handing this to journalists. And the journalists weren't even aware of the fact that this, these, the CIA was the ones handing them the information. So, oh. which I think is completely still going on today. But oh, that's sure. something that's been like, proven it was a government operation you could read about it and um it probably hasn't stopped probably not yep i don't trust any of these institutions yeah no so this is like such a good i feel like it's like a really popular conspiracy theory and like there's so many things about it but the denver airport it is just like a mystery (laughs) that was what i was gonna bring up too so that one is so bizarre and at first i was skeptical but so there's the denver international airport um people always say dia And it's just weird because it had been under construction for a really long time. And like anytime they tried to add on or anything, something weird would happen. Um, And then they had this, they commissioned this artist to create this giant blue horse called Lucifer that looks like blue, like a blue horse Lucifer, literally. And the guy who made the statue in the airport was then killed by the statue. Like the statue fell on him and killed him. Um, and that statue was in the airport. And then they also have like all of these weird pictures and, um, things saying like talking about aliens and underground tunnels. And they have a lot of weird modern art when you walk through it. And so the theory is that there's actually a lot of underground tunnels that 
government officials, elites, whoever are using. Um, and for some reason, it's underneath Denver because there's actually a some sort of military base called um, something up in Colorado that I hadn't heard about. I forgot the name of it. But that was the theory because I was like, why Denver? Um, but again, you can go really deep on that. I cannot say 100% for sure that that's happening, but the airport is very weird. I don't know if you guys have been there. Um, have I you- have yeah. been to the Denver and yeah, I've flown through. Yeah. So for sure. And you saw that weird stuff. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. I was like kind of paying attention to, I, I thought it was weird. I didn't think anything of it. Cause I personally hadn't heard. I, I actually haven't heard about that one. Um, but I mean, I remember passing through, I thought the art was weird. I thought like the airport was odd, but yeah, I don't know. It was a feeling though. There was a vibe. It it's, um, that one's the one that you're just like, you know, like, I would like stay up at night being like, is that real? Is that not real? But again, after you realize the ones that are real, you're just like, it could easily yeah. be real. There's yeah. so and many. I think that the government like does have tunnels. And this was like a big thing going on, like during nine 11, that, uh, Bush was like, when all of this happened, like he went to like the underground tunnels. Cause like, they obviously have to protect the president and they had no idea what was going on type thing. And so I do feel like on some level for the government, they're like, okay, like if everything goes to crap, how are we going to protect our elitists? And like, where do we put them underground? Like where they're safe and no one, like they're, I've heard that there's like an underground society. Like, so it's not just like tunnels, like it's an actual full functioning cities that like they're building under there just in case like something happens and they need to like put, put the elitists somewhere else. So, you know, what's weird is recently, I don't, are you guys on Telegram? No, no. Okay, so that's where you can get some good info. Um, I'll have to download that. This is making me realize like how deep in this shit I am. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Um, But I found, um, is it Julian Assange's telegram? Or um, what's his name? What's the other one? I always get them confused. Uh, Um, The other one who's like, can't. Um, It's it's there, but I can't pull it. I'm so sorry. I just want to tell you because I don't, I think it is Julian Assange, but he wrote the other day on his telegram that the elites have underground transportation that is used through that they've created this like co- copper technology and there's bullet trains throughout underground that they use wow. to get to different places around the world. So you could get from like the U S to Tokyo in like an hour or something. I just read this like a week ago. And wow. I was like, hey, I that will is so say, annoying that we're out here using transportation that right? takes like hours <laughs> I a will day to say go across the country. That transportation honestly hasn't really changed that much in a period of like a substantial amount of years. Like when you think about when the railroad was put together and airplanes, like it, there's just no way that we've not moved and changed that that aspect of life yeah. for something is different. I don't know if that's like, can you do that? I don't know, but there's just no way that we haven't developed like a more efficient form of transportation yeah. by now. Henry Ford and Elon Musk like, okay, so it's still a car. It still has four wheels. Um, the only thing is that it's electric in the cars. The like doors flip up like, oh, okay. That wasn't that cool. <laughs> yep. And it's, I read this thing recently. Um, I was telling my fiance this the other night. It was, a, I can't remember what podcast it was, but they gave a stat where it was like, um, civilian technology is basically like 20 to 40 years behind government technology mm-hmm. in terms of like what they'll show us. So yeah. that's a very good point in that it really hasn't changed for all the advancements we've had in medicine and science and everything else. I mean, they're literally growing babies at fake wombs in Germany. That's so, very stressful. I, I wish mean, they wouldn't do that, but <laughs> I, I know. I really wish they would stop that. But like, can we not? <laughs> I really wish that you guys would stop that. <laughs> Stop it now. We don't know what the long-term effects of this are, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very good point, though. I wouldn't be surprised. That I'm, like, moving around. If you guys watched the video of this, I'm so sorry. I'm, like, trying to, like, not have light on my face, but continue. That is so interesting, though. And, like, I do think that that's, like, true, though, because they do say that they they test technology, like, with the military first. Exactly. And, like, see that everything gets tested with them. So I think that that's so fascinating and like, yeah, like the amount of technology, like sure we've come, come far with like iPhones, um, but you can't tell me that mm, iPhones are the only thing that have progressed in this amount of time. Exactly. Technology, Especially transportation. With all the money, like you see a, like Elise have, I mean, if you're a billionaire, you have access to stuff that we don't. Yeah. You're telling me that like now I went from one camera in 
2005 to three cameras and that's as far as we've got They're like you know we'll just we'll keep adding cameras on that phone and exactly that's, that's what Thank you're gonna so get I, oh, I don't know guys <laughs> yeah. like wow i'm so glad that you know within 15 years i have better selfies <laughs> that's, that's really important they that's want us stuff. distracted well they have all this like you know they could like see through us with theirs probably and we're yeah. like Oh my god, this is so cute. Yeah, they're like, here, we're gonna give them really high definition selfies so they can go make TikToks and like they won't even know that we're building underground. And we're gonna shorten Literally. their attention span and we're gonna feed them horrible food and yep. make them very unhealthy and basically we're gonna make everyone sick so that yep. we're they're just relying on us forever. We'll be yep. their new god since they wanna remove yep. God from society. The government will now be God. And that that's, is the, that's uh, the you guys just nailed exactly what it, and, and you see when you really study these theories as much as i have is that uh i mean anyone can i'm only saying that because i did it for two years deep down right dove and you see that like that really is the the underlying like the thread throughout it's it's very obvious so it's hard to like dig into these conspiracy theories and then blindly trust the government um you know yeah. especially because yeah. like the ones i said there's also um have you heard of mk ultra no i don't think so no so is that that's the one Oh, no, I was talking about, so MK Ultra. they basically, was also, it's not, they say it's conspiracy theory, it's not a conspiracy theory. They would um, try to, they were studying mind control. Um, so they would use, Whoa. they would use, like, LSD, acid, different, oh, like, mind control. Oh, I've heard of this, and, and they would, it's, like, so fascinating. They would, they would give them to prisoners without their consent, they gave them to CIA members without them consent, their consent. One guy, like, killed himself afterwards. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so they were trying to control us to see if you could like hijack a human brain, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's honestly, well documented. Yeah, I think that that also makes so much sense, especially like in today. Like we see people are kind of just like mind. It just seems like there's there's some people like us that are like very much with it and like we're kind of aware. But then there's other people like I've had like friends that I don't talk to anymore because it just seems like they're so into absolutely nothing. Like mm -hmm. nothing goes on inside their head. They're so obsessed with TikTok. They're so obsessed with like themselves and scrolling mm -hmm. and like social media that I'm like, are you even aware of like life and like anything that's like not you and like not social media? Yeah. Like, do you know what's real? And it just seems like a lot of people just like are so in tune with like trends in social media and like, being popular or like whatever the next thing is and like they're just scrolling on tiktok and making these social yeah. media things and like they're so obsessed with that that like it sort of does seem like mind control because i think that there's like a very there's some huge vast, events yeah there's a vast majority of people that are just so like out of it and like also like they believe all these like woke narratives that the government says like like blm it is what it is like go out there and write and people are just doing it but i'm like do you know why you're doing it and they're like well well, I couldn't answer like anything, but like it's this is I'm mad and I'm gonna burn down buildings, but this is just because the government says so. It's a hundred percent like I've seen it sadly happen to. I, I grew up with like a, I was in a very academic environment. I went to like a top ten college. All my friends went to Ivy League schools, and I these are the smartest kids I've ever met. And I have watched, I'd say all of them except for maybe one, be like sy systematically brainwashed at at like different schools, especially my friends who went to Stanford. They literally lost their ever living, like, like they lost their minds to the point where I had to block them. Um, and the stuff they were saying, I was like, this is not the person I grew up with. This was not my sister. And it, it to the point where like my parents were freaked out because they're like, that's not, that's not that girl with the stuff yeah. She, yeah. she was saying. Um, and her family and her background and, and like the history of her family, her family came off on the Mayflower and she's sitting here telling me that I'm like a dumb bitch for not paying reparations. Like, it's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, I don't know. Just like really, really, really delusional. And I, it's, it, so I completely understand what you're saying. And I like, liken it to people walking around in meat suits. It's just like, they, yeah. they, and I don't know at what point, like if it's, if it's a genetic thing, if you listen to it long enough that it seeps into your brain. Um, but there's something that happens with some people and others it doesn't. And I, I can't figure out what it is, but it really feels like brainwashing. Yeah, it is. I, it's like, in, it's it's a little crazy to say, but like, I do feel like the college, like we do, like, especially on the conservative side, like it is people call it indoctrination. But it's like, so it's not just like a professor telling you what they think. It's like so much deeper because like yeah. these people are just like championing anything that the left says. And it's like, they truly like, 
they don't understand what's going on. Like they don't know why they're rioting. They don't know why they're so they're they have feminist rage and they're like, oh, I hate men, but they they don't know. I... They, like they can't actually justify it. They don't have any no nope. knowledge yeah. to back that. But they're just I... so mad and they're so angry. But it's because the government is like, you should be angry. You should be mad. Like. We, and I just, I don't understand that. It's like so confusing. I don't, right. and for me, the, the biggest thing, especially when, cause I, I brought up like the intelligence of my friends only because like, they're very much critical thinkers. And that's like how we were taught growing up. At least I took it that way because my school really did teach us to like think critically. And so what's weird for me is the people who do have a very like wide array of knowledge when it comes to history, not just American history, European history. And they're, they know all of that, but they are still able to then cling to these ideologies that I know deep down they know is not even historically correct or in line with what the knowledge they have. So it's just like- I don't even know that it's knowledge. I think as someone who was, I I remained conservative all through college. I was very much so opposed. (laughs) I fought, I had to fight my teachers in some cases because I had, I took an ethics class. Um, And look, I went to a big SEC school in the South. Okay, Okay. so generally speaking, I was in the South, but- when you enter a college campus, all of that goes out of the window. Most of your professors are absolutely liberal. I took an ethics class, okay? So you're learning ethical principles. And we had to basically compile, we had to apply some theories to a situation. And I just remember being exceptionally frustrated because I picked a topic I knew my professor was going to hate. She'd make us listen to the news as like our recap every morning. And of course she picked biased channels that were not reporting anything substantive and I was initially a journalism major and I quickly left that field because I just couldn't even tolerate it for more than 10 seconds because a lot of my professors just have this like blind faith in this system that I knew was broken and I take this class it's ethics right it's applying principles to a situation and that's it and I knew that if I applied the principles correctly I would get a good grade and I wanted to test her so I picked a topic I knew that she would hate she immediately gave me a poor grade on it. And I said, take it back. Um, I slid the paper over and I said, look, I know that I applied this correctly because I made sure, because I knew that you weren't going to like this topic. I said, to so reevaluate this or I'm taking this up the, up the chain. I was like, this is discrimination. You do not like the topic. You don't agree with me. And I'm not saying that you have to. You just have to look and see if it was applied correctly. If so, reevaluate this grade. If not, I'll be bringing this up. And she reevaluated my grade. And for the rest of the semester, I had to make sure I really studied. But <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's very yeah. much so like the divergent and like Hunger Games, like the second you yeah. put question into the government, like you're questioning your authority, like people turn against you. They're like, you can't question authority. And like, you turn into like a bad person. Yeah. For, like not, Bigger... it's, it's not even like I'm saying anything, but like I'm questioning what's going on. And like, that should be okay to question things that are going on in the world. I think it's bigger than that, even. Um, I don't even necessarily know that it's knowledge. Like you were talking about your friends being critical thinkers and being able to identify all of these situations and stuff. And I don't even, it's this, it's, it's pressure. It's pressure to conform. And it's, I think some people are more susceptible to pressure. Um, they can't withstand opposition. And I think too, yeah. this whole movement where we have social media coming into play and people are using filters and there's such a pressure to be body perfect and everything look a certain way or act, you know, live a certain way. Like we don't have normal houses anymore. Everyone has to have like the nicest thing or the nicest mm-hmm. chair or whatever it is. It, it's this pressure to like conform and they've like taken that and they've mis- they've construed it in people's personalities some are more susceptible and because they're breaking down that like sense of self when you look at that and then you break all of that down it doesn't matter if you're looking at the smartest person in the room if they like internally are completely like ridden with this self-loathing and i'm not good enough it, you're yeah. looking at like a really dysfunctional society it's so and true that's what and i know I, I, it's very accurate and insightful and i think um it's funny because I'm Jewish and I, this usually, I hear this from Christian people, but I'd say the majority of my friends are Christian. Um, and I, I, throughout all of this, it definitely brought me back into, uh, religion and just like seeking out God. And I realized that, um, I mean, I sat there in the past year, read like the whole old and new Testament, which if I heard myself say that two years ago, I'd be like, what? Um, but I just think that there, 
is something that internally I was like, no, there is a truth and you have to have something that will give, that will give you the, like the stability in life to make, I love Jordan Peterson, but he says like, oh, same. You, like order out of chaos. Like that's what God is. That's what, like, that's what the concept of God is. Take, if you don't say the universe, whatever, if you're hippy dippy, yeah. like that is what God is. And he gives you that like foundation and stability and whether it's like the Bible or just, you know, you believe in a higher power. Um, it's a purpose. You have that to fall back on. And you realize that all this other stuff is pure chaos and yeah. it's confusing. It's leading you in different directions. And I think I kind of realized all of that after kind of going down every new age rabbit hole I could in LA, because I realized that, uh, you know, whether you get into astrology, you get into Reiki, you get into, you know, really Kundalini yoga and all this stuff is like, all it does is open a million other doors and leave you more confused and more chaotic. And so yes, yes. I found myself even more lost and being like, this isn't healthy. This isn't helpful. I'm clinging yes. now into every ideology that pops up. Yes, I can. The vaccine is my savior. Like, you know, you're, you, you're able to cling to all this when you just have to take a step back and be like, no, there isn't a true eternal truth. People have been following this for thousands of years. Maybe yes. people have from the past had some wisdom to give us um, that we could glean from. So in an, in an age where people are just blindly worshiping TikTok, Instagram, their selves, like you have yeah. to have some sort of spiritual practice if you want to stay on this path yeah. and stay sane, I'd say. Yes. So they will I make like something a God. That's, yes. that's my takeaway. This, this society, like, what we're seeing now, like all this chaos, it's because like we're entering a godless world. People are getting rid of religion and 100%. like switching it for a juice cleanse or yoga yeah. or manifestation. Like, oh, it's human design. I'm manifesting this shit. And like, like when I hear matter. that, yeah, I, when I hear this, I'm like, listen, the, your juice cleanse and your meditation daily is like, that's, you can't, it doesn't supplement for God. That's great that you do these things and like, but it doesn't, you can't just replace religion and like all this chaos and riots and these negative people. Like, so just as an example, like I posted, I made a Dylan Mulvaney post, like genuinely <sighs> concerned about this human being because I think he's sick and I think that yes. he needs help. Yeah. And, and, and it wasn't like, I would never make fun of him, but people are coming at me on this post, like saying, go kill yourself. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, you're supposed to be a Christian, love thy neighbor. And I'm like, listen, I can be a Christian and like, I can love thy neighbor and two things can be true at once. Like I can love this person and I can love everyone and be kind, but I can also question the evil that my neighbor is doing. Like I don't have to love their evils mm -hmm. and it's just turning like these people are like, well, I don't believe in God. I'm like, well then why'd you say love thy neighbor? And also like, this is what's it's genuinely concerning that what you believe in is yourself. You believe in the government. Like you, instead of putting faith into God and like a higher power, like you're putting it into you. And like, mm -hmm. that is, that's evil. Like mm -hmm. you're not living for it, yourself. Yeah. Uh, you're not living for God. You're living for yourself. And like, to me, like that is so wicked. And it to speaks... live in that sort of manner, like this is why we're seeing, right? This is why people are like rioting this weekend. And it's because they're filled with so much hate and evil. Yeah. And like, they only do things for themselves. It's a hundred. And I, I mean, I like even like if I, I feel myself getting in that like bitter, hateful, like it's so easy in today's world. Like. I yep, get nasty yes. DMs all the time. I get people being like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, kill yourself, whatever. Like, all, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. for no reason. And I feel, I, I can feel myself getting bitter and hateful. And you have to take a step back and be like, this is not a good constructive feeling. And what yeah. brings me back to being a, standing firm in what I believe and being truthful and not spewing hate back. Because, and if you don't have something like that, and that's why I bring up spirituality, like it's so easy to cave. Yeah. It's so easy to just, or just keep silent. Like either it, go it along is. with it or just shut your mouth. And it speaks to this bigger issue of this just denial of simple truths or simple realities. I yeah. mean, this, this Dylan Mulvaney thing, you know, our, we were kind of blowing up yesterday on this post and we were getting a lot of really nasty I need to look comments. At it. You posted it yesterday? <laughs> Uh, no, oh, this was like an was... old post from like October. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. And people are just still getting mad. Like it must so, have just started like the engagement got it boosted and people are commenting. And, and it hit the so algorithm fun. of people who would naturally disagree. Of course. Um, and so, you know, these people, they're, they're leaving like really hateful comments. But the issue is, look, this person, you wouldn't look at, for example, like you wouldn't get like you have a family member who's a drug dealer or a drug addict. OK, let's let's use that as an example. And they want drugs 
And what, are we just supposed to like condone this lifestyle and say that it's fine and it's cool if they're like dealing to children and this is all fine? Like we would naturally, Christian or not, step in and say, hey, this is actually a natural wrong. This doesn't make sense. There are things that support like this will affect your brain function. You will get addicted to this. This will be a lifelong problem for you. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You encourage treatment. You encourage rehab. You encourage therapy and you encourage someone to seek assistance. That's loving someone. Um, The same can be said for this sort of transgender movement, because in my opinion, it kind of detracts from the actual people who are attracted to their their same sex and it, it that's sad to me because this is something they cannot change about themselves because god made us for a certain purpose and if you're not able if that's not your thing and you can't do that i do believe that you were born that way but you're taking that away and you're saying that that's not that doesn't even exist anymore so the movement that they originally had where you were like yeah sure that's fine that's good okay, then they took that movement and they construed it into something so far outlandish and crazy. And we're giving children hormone blockers. We're telling adults that, oh, this is reversible, or you can cut this off and it'll be fine. And it's Mm -hmm. like, look, your brain is having a sensation for something that no longer exists. And you don't feel like it's your body. There's just so many different truths. There's Leah Thomas, who is like smashing women's records. I was a swimmer. This really bothers me. There's people using women's restrooms and they're definitely men and they're walking in and they're calling themselves women and they're flashing people in the women's bathroom, minors in the women's bathroom. And that's fine. And now we're having drag shows. And it's like, look, all of this is because we can't just acknowledge a simple truth. Are we going to have a line? It's a denial. Well, that's the thing is like, (laughs) our moral, like our morality was based on Judeo-Christian truths. Like, that's just where our moral code came from. So, like, you can argue that for centuries. That's just what it's It is. is. Like, that's true. So when you take that and you shove it up your ass, uh, (laughs) you basically are left with a free-for-all, which is like, yeah, you could be a boy today, you could be a girl today. And I'm very much of the opinion, like, I don't care what other, like, if you're not harming people, do what you want to do. But at this point, it's It's harming people. It's, it's not okay when I have family friends who are now homeschooling their kids and they don't have the time or, you know, they, they can't do it, but they're forced to because their kids are coming home at 12 years old and saying, I want my boobs cut off and I want a penis. Like literally this happened to one of my family friends. Wow. So like, and I'm seeing it and these are, aren't parents who are these like right wing conservatives. You know what I mean? It's just like, no, my kid is like actually really getting like messed up from this. Like she does not understand gender and she's 13. So what are you going to do? Like, it's just, it's, I think it's, and, and again, back to the conspiracy theories is you see that the government, they do, they're, they're steering us in a direction that there is, there's an, a, a much deeper thing going on. Um, and it's, if you can break down society by causing chaos, again, chaos. And destruction, um, you're going to be lost and you're going to be much e- more easily able to be controlled. Um, and and yep. that's what's happening. And you need someone to step in. And what do people look to when you've removed church, you've removed family, you've broken down all of these core pillars that people rely upon and you've stolen all of that and they're left with nothing. And then the government steps in and they're like, we can help you. Yep. No, <laughs> I do not trust you guys. You guys are wild. And so that's why there's just this <laughs> such this animosity toward people who have questions and aren't buying this this lie that's being sold and you know it's like look also christians and you know people of faith they have such standards and it's we're villainized for it and it's like look what we're believing isn't harming anyone but god forbid it's some you know in all of these countries that these i I call leftists because i don't even think they're democrats anymore they're just they're leftists they're it's like this entire other cult Um, You know, they want to support all these other countries that they don't understand, but they don't realize that if they were to go over there with these same ideologies and these same belief systems, they would be crushed in two seconds. These are not like we are the only country that's just allowing people think we've lost our minds. (laughs) It doesn't. We have. We, we I have really family have. in other countries, and they're like, what is going on over there? Oh, what are you guys doing? I, and, you know, a thing I, I don't know. 
I saw a lot of like I'm very grateful because my parents since we were little took us like I've been to India, Africa, Nepal like for long periods of time. Um, and you see these countries and you see I was like exposed to it from a young age, but you see different religions, you see the way they live, you see the corruption and the fact that people in America like I know I'm like you've never seen that. You have no right to sit there like go to Zimbabwe and get held up for a thousand bucks with an AK-47 at your head and be like, oh my God, America's so hard. Like, <laughs> please, really, please. Like, yeah. it's unbelievable. And they laugh at us because, I don't know if you guys saw What is a Woman, but- Oh, um, yes. I'm sure, yeah. But when he Love goes it. to Africa and he's asking them, I yeah. just laugh so hard They're like, them what? <laughs> because that's really how they think. They think we're crazy. And, and They laugh. You, they, you have these like self-righteous, like white college, and I'm saying white because a lot of the times it's like- They are. Mother Soul says like, the what is he was like the um isn't it like the biggest harm to uh african community uh african americans is like the like woke white community basically it's like yeah, woke probably yeah. yeah but that's and they have no idea what they're talking about like it's actually no. embarrassing yeah <laughs> and also other countries like it's hard to take us seriously like a hundred percent like what in the women they're like they looked at each other like wait wait men can be women in your country like, <laughs> that is such a joke and it's like it's sad because I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't know why we're doing this. And it's like, people, again, like, think that in America, they're like, well, well, we're not free because I can't identify as a furry and, like, just poop in a litter box in my classroom. Like, that's not freedom. I want freedom. I want to dress up as a cat and I want a litter box in my classroom and that's freedom. Like, no, no, no. This is insanity. I think you're getting insanity and freedom confused. <laughs> Literally like, it's, insane. I just want to know, like, where... Where do we, at what point are we, where would they draw the line? Because apparently it's nowhere. Um, and I'm just wondering how far they want this to go. And then they're like, well, it's, oh, my favorite line is, well, they're living their truth. And I'm like, oh, there's, there's two truths. There's more yes. than one truth. I can, I can have my, there's, there's actually reality. And that's where we should be living <laughs> and not in a place called. People don't truth. get to have personal, <laughs> personal truths. There is truth and there is opinion. Remember fact and opinion in school when they yes. read off a list well, and they said, fact, hi, this opinion, is a fact and this and is then opinion. There's fact Your opinion truth. and then the, my truth. Yeah, <laughs> and <then I'm> like, <laughs> that's, but that's the thing too. It's like when you take out God or like, you know, morality is then, yeah, you do worship yourself. Like that is, and then there is no truth. You're the truth. So if I want to be a mermaid, I can be a mermaid. Because that's literally yeah. what I just decided is true. Yeah, it's and very then it stressful. Also, it, it brings back like I'm like, then what is the point of living in this world and like doing what we're doing if there's just no truth and there's no reality, there's no morals, there's no philosophy? Because I mean, behind poli politics, like politics is not politics. Politics is morals and philosophy, and then it's people speaking for what they believe in, and then that's what becomes politi political parties. But, yeah. I mean, it's really morals and philosophy, and if we don't have that, then I just don't know what we have. No, it's it's a scary time just because you're right. I don't know where the line ends, and it's like conservatives are like, it's almost like they've just been like a wall. They don't even really push back that much yeah. like in the government, yeah. and it's just been like this, like, it's like pushing back and back and back and back and back, and I don't know where it goes until it's like, like at what point you know <laughs> uh, yeah and, and i think that's why conspiracy theories are so interesting and fun and and just kind of eye-opening like regardless of whether or not they're 100 percent true it does kind of make someone think like okay what can the government actually accomplish what can what can average like what can these billionaires do and when you follow that money trail i swear a lot of these conspiracy theories they're not conspiracy theories nope. they're not it's not a theory, it's a truth. And it's, it's enacted, I think, a lot of people to start really like critically thinking again and putting some of this stuff in it. Like we're ignoring the my truth stuff. And it's like, okay, wait, actually this makes sense. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I just, I don't understand either like how some people refuse to talk about some topics. There's like a hard line and it's like, absolutely not. And it's like, okay, how can you be like a critical thinker or someone who is interested in talking about all of these different things? And then there's a line where you won't cross it. And that's just a game over. Um, but yeah, it's like, I just, yeah, it's like crazy. fear and the, like being scared of the not fitting into the collective. Um, and yes. it's no, it's, and it's true with the conspiracy theories. Like one other that just came to mind is during the prohibition in the thirties, the U S government poisoned alcohol. They poisoned the alcohol supply. So people were dropping dead from drinking alcohol. And that's very well documented. They were like, yeah, we did it. 
Wait, um, the government wouldn't make anyone drop dead or anything. That's so yeah, weird. no, you're right. So Actually, unlike them. You're like, um, it's not like we don't we don't know what that is. We don't know. We've never seen that before. It's not like it just happened or anything. It's cool. Dropping <laughs> dead. No, no. no one's dying suddenly. And um, a big farm is a whole other thing. I mean, you could I think like I think the government could easily be creating um, viruses ju- only in order to come up with vaccines to combat yeah. them. That's like, yeah. um, you know, that's just big, a big pharma is like one of the worst conspiracies, big, even though big, it's not a big pharma. The, he always institute- talks about it a lot. I um, despise yeah. big pharma. I actually just started a journey with like a naturopathic physician instead. Nice. As like a preventative. Go. Yeah. So I start like a new program literally on Monday, but it, it's just, they, they literally actually checked me out, ran my blood work, ran everything, explained exactly what was going on, wow. um, which, and, and they were like, look, you don't, you know, it, they will have a pill for literally any ailment or any issue and big pharma has what has happened too as a result is i feel like all of these doctors what it meant to be a doctor and i don't want to discredit doctors there's absolutely a place for modern medicine to be sure um but you know doctors now are cookie cutter Mm -hmm. you don't have these doctors that are making like a really intelligent they're just well, they're, it's the way not, they're taught is like it's very uh, one-sided and it's very cut and dry. It's cut and dry. This is it. No, no questioning because a lot of this college I went to is like it has like the biggest pre-med um, undergrad program, and then their med school. Right. I went to Washington University in St. Louis, so their med school is like a big. They do a lot of research yeah. and stuff. But a lot of my friends there who are now doctors, whatever I'm just gonna say it. I, they they're they're brainwashed. Like I wouldn't ask them for medical help because no. I. And I grew up, my dad's a doctor, but he also, he started as a chiropractor. So I think he, so he has like knowledge of Eastern medicine too. Um, and he said, he's like, from that side, I got that literally, he's like, we had signs all over our school saying like, always question everything, question big pharma, because right. they would teach them that Western medicine, a lot of times, not always there's a place for it, but there's a lot of stuff that's just made or pushed for profit. Um, sure. And that's, yeah, it's happening today with, yeah. it's very obvious. <laughs> and, and it's, I think it's like the lack of thinking again, like it comes, that's what it comes down to. Like we just need more thinking and yeah. less just like being so mindless. We're and just fear. stuck in the society. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like fear is a people- big one. That's how they got this whole, I mean, it was, a, it was an experiment and we failed. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> well, actually so. we passed depending on who, you, which side you're on, but um, <laughs> no, but that's know. like, Peyton, that's why I got really excited when I met you because I was like, and that's what I said. I was like, keep doing the show. Like you, you cannot like the second you sit there and embody fear, and you're like, I'm scared to say this. I did it for ten years. I was scared to say yeah. something, and I want to slap myself because even if you take, you know, you take hits, but somebody out there it's going to get to, and that person will it'll create a trickle effect because if people yeah. aren't talking about this stuff, like we really like this would snowball so freaking fast. Um, which it already is, but at least there's, there has to be some pushback. Yeah. And like someone, honestly, I'm like, I, uh, I completely agree. Like people do have to like use their voices and stand up. And it's so scary because like, yeah, sure. Cancel culture. And like, you'll lose friends. And, like there's so many things that go with it, but also like, yeah, I'm like, fine. If, if one person can hear my voice and like, that's how I've met so many of my friends now, it's just like people messaging yeah. me, like saying like, wow, like, thank you for saying that. I'm like, Ooh, you're one of them. You're one of them. And like, there's people out there that need this so then they can then speak up or like then they feel okay to think differently and like i'm completely fine with that so i'm like yeah i'm if i have to like get roasted on the internet and people send me nasty dms because i'm drawing a line somewhere like that's fine i don't i have thick skin i'm fine with that and i think that it's also just like there's a greater good that comes out of it like sure like you said you're gonna take hits and it is really scary and like you're going to face some scary things but like if if the end means it's worth it, then, then so be it. And like, also if I'm not using my voice, I'm like, I just feel like it's again, like comes down to like your religion and like what I'm called to do. And I'm like, if this is like me protecting my religion and like, also I don't want to be a lukewarm Christian. Like I, my faith is so strong that like, I also want to like share my faith and like help others in their faith. And like, that's what Christianity is. It's not about staying silent and being selfish and like, soaking in your own faith and like god is good but like i'm gonna keep it in my own circle and like 
not speak up. Like, no, God was fierce. God stepped on toes. Yep. God made people very angry. And, like, it wasn't always a pretty thing. And, like, that's what religion is. It's not supposed to be, like, rainbows and butterflies. Mm-hmm. No, that is true. And as as a Jew, I, I mean, because we, we follow the Old Testament. You guys add the yep. New Testament. Yeah. So I, right. we have a lot of shared history. Um, but... No, I'm very grateful for my Christian friends because they're the ones who like really kind of guided me back to um, Judeo-Christian values and principles. I grew up fairly religiously Jewish. Like I went to temple and I think it, it's a very similar mindset as Christians yeah. for the most part. Like it's not the there's a lot of crossover. There's the not there's a lot of non-secular Jews who get into the like they say they're Jewish and then they're just kind of pieces of shit. Um, which I feel like I could say because I'm Jewish, but I, Christians are the same way. It's yeah. So it's like, but I've noticed even like my, I have Orthodox Jewish friends who are like diehard conservatives. Like they will do anything right. for um, like the movement. And I literally lost my train of thought, but um, no, my, I'm very grateful to my Christian friends because Christians have this like need to share their faith and, you know, spread that knowledge. And it really had a massive impact on my life. Um, and I think that like I've been talking about it more and I want to share that with other people because I think we do have some sort of basis to stand on, some spiritual ground to stand on. You really start feeling, I mean, it's so easy to feel depressed and anxious and like just lost today. Yes. Um, And I can say that from being, having been there with no sense of anything. 100% agree with that because today using my voice and also kind of what you said is hearing other people say so like hearing a Peyton hearing maybe Mm -hmm. like you listened to a girls gone right episode maybe you heard us talk or maybe you watched just something where someone said something that was different or maybe what you're thinking and then you feel empowered and you're like okay so there are other people like me out there yeah college was very isolating for me you know and I do realize too a few years ago If you had put me in a room and said, oh, just outwardly talk about, like, I'm Catholic, so outwardly talk about your faith or outwardly talk about your political beliefs or these ideologies, I would have said, "Mm, not in this room. Like, Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't do it in this room. But now it's like, look, I feel empowered and okay. And I will say I was more stressed, depressed or anxious then than I am now Because for every ugly comment I would get, I got 14 good ones. Or just as an example, like anytime Peyton and I like ruffle feathers or Peyton ruffles feathers or I ruffle feathers, (laughs) whatever happens, um, whoever, whoever we piss off that day, um, you know, we get more positive than we do negative. And, and I'm okay with you not liking me because I like me and, you know, I have faith in God and I, God likes me and I'm, I'm okay with this because I'm living my truth. Um, for those of you <laughs> <laughs> that are, um, can't see my air it's quotes, true though. Um, my truth, but I'm living in what I, what, what is truth and what I believe and I'm living that fully. And so I feel much more confident and secure in that. And so if you want to come for me have fun that's okay yeah, yeah. I'll me and fine. Rachel had a discussion we're like dang honestly we're so confident like not to <laughs> not to like gas ourselves up but I'm like Rachel we are like just overly confident we were and it's laughing gonna take a yesterday lot to knock, it's gonna take like I don't know what would knock me off my horse I don't I have not experienced anything that will knock me off this horse like for some reason I'm just way too confident and like people can like rose to me like that's fine and like I, I get mean comments all the time like people could make fun of me to my face and I'm like I don't know. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I am so, like, you couldn't, you couldn't hurt me if you tried. But at first, that's very admirable because I would always look at people like, you know, even people like, even like Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, like I'm naming people Daily Wire, um, you know, Stephen Crowder, whoever you listen to. Like I, when I first started listening to this stuff or getting into it, I was like, how do these people do that? Like, how do they have the ability to like, and Trump, for instance, like love him or hate him. Like that guy yeah. was tormented. Yeah. I mean, the confidence on that man. Like, how do you wake up? And my mom would always be like, how does he wake up in the morning without just, like, breaking? And it's like, yeah. I would look up to those people, and you have to realize that, like, people who are leaders in the world, like, they have to take a lot of freaking arrows. And so it takes practice, but if you can, like, really get into that space, like, you cannot yeah. be broken. Um, and it takes I, time, but, like, I'm very I'm, I'm very happy that you guys yeah. are doing this. And Yeah, you too. Yeah. I'm like glad that, I mean, like, especially being girls too, like, I think it's just amazing that like, we're just like out here 
speaking our voices and like standing up for morals and values in a world that seems to like want to destroy them. And I think that like hopefully in the end game, like this is all going to like make a difference and like that's the goal for here, sure. Like, Absolutely. Spreading this. And also, if we uh, get Clinton, uh, because this episode goes out, <laughs> um, I just I want to make everything. Did <laughs> <get> myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't disappear on an airplane. Um, this my brakes this... work fine. I just got my oil changed. Like, Literally, you just recently got your... checked. No. Yep, yep, we're good. Um, like, my car's good. It's not going to explode. Like, yeah. They... So if something happens to us uh, relatively soon, just come back to this episode. And we can get cl- or we, yeah, we got Clinton. Like, please look into this. Hey, <laughs> Bye. Thank you guys so much. Uh, 